I love life and everything about it. Do you? I love the plants, the animals, the fungi, and even the bacteria, and the people, all of the beautiful people. To me, all life experiences are valuable and dear, and it is this immense appreciation and respect for life that has led me on a quest. It's a quest for longevity. Now, longevity is the experience of living a long, healthy, and happy life. And our ancestors have really been searching for its secrets for millennia. They've tried everything from elixirs and potions and austerities and sought out the fountain of youth. But it's only recently that the wisdom of ancient cultures can be coupled with modern scientific research that can reveal the secrets of longevity. And today, I'd like to share those secrets with you. Scientific research has concluded that a healthy human being can live up to about 120 years old. And this is substantiated by, well, the oldest people in the world, uh, recorded history, uh, are about 120 years old. However, if we look at we look at human history, we see that for the vast majority of human history, the average life span has been about 25 years. Humans really, for most of our history, only lived to be about 25 years old. And we see over here on the, on the right of the diagram, only recently something very peculiar has changed and the human lifespan has escalated rapidly. Let's explore that phenomena a little closer. We see here that around in the years, in the year 1600, the human lifespan uh, rapidly increased. And this can be attributed to three major factors. The first is agriculture. While humans have been planting things and raising domesticated animals for a while, it's at this point that the methods of agriculture really began to inflate and escalate, and food became more available for the people, and they tended to live a little bit longer. Then came the Industrial Revolution. A myriad of products and services took the edge off of human life, and it allowed uh, less stress on the body, and once again, the human lifespan increased. Most notably here, the internal combustion engine providing transportation and distributing the food to the people. And lastly, here in the 1900s, we have the medical revolution, where um, medical drugs, pharmaceuticals, procedures and surgeries further extended to the human lifespan until its current average at about 80, in some areas maybe going up to 85, which is still a far cry from the 120 years that science estimates the human can live. In fact, it's about 30 or 40, 35 or 40 years difference. So how can we explain the difference between the, how long humans are living now compared to their maximum potential of 120 years? Furthermore, we do see the increase in human life appears in many countries, Chile, Japan, New Zealand, Norway, and the USA. As we can see, lifespan since the 1800s has increased rather remarkably. So we turn our attention to cultures that tend to live a long time. These long-lived cultures exist throughout the, throughout the world, and their members typically live well past 90 years old, sometimes past 100, and become centenarians. And while you might expect some of these long-lived cultures to be in more modern industrial societies, really that's not the case. We see the five longest living cultures here, Campo de Valley, Italy, which is the village of eternal youth, Simi, Greece, where olive oil is queen. Their diet consists of a lot of high composition of olive oil. Okinawa, Japan, that's Longevity Island. These are the most famous of the longevity cultures. The most research has been done on the Okinawan centenarians analyzing their lifestyle, their genetics. Bahama, China is the village of longevity, and Hunza, Pakistan, the land of just enough. <laughs> Not too much, just enough. So we've looked at these long-lived cultures and we've arrived at some conclusions. And the first of which is that these people live long lives, but it's more than that. They live long, healthy, and happy lives. They're, they live to, to celebrate, to activate, to participate, to laugh, and to love. Their lives are full and productive and meaningful all the way till the end. And they usually, typically, they die rather quickly, a short period of morbidity. This is not what we're talking about. <laughs> this is not longevity. With long periods of pain and suffering prior to death. So here, now we can join the wisdom of 
of the elders with modern scientific research and arrive at some effective longevity practices. The first and foremost, without a doubt, is diet. And there's many aspects to diet, and let's take a look at those right now. Typically, the diet should be plant-based, which basically means high in fruits, veggies, and whole grains. And while some of the longevity cultures do eat meat, it's typically just fish, and it's usually in extreme moderation. Fruits, vegetables, and grains, basically we're talking about plant material here, everybody. The diet should be high in nutrient, yet low calorie. Now, we're not saying that calories are bad, but typically, most Americans probably get more than they need. A typical American diet might have between 2,000 and 2,500 calories. That's what's recommended. A typical Okinawan diet is about 1,500 calories per person per day. So the idea here is to eat uh, enough food, but not too much food, but enough food so it has enough nutrients. So the nutrients have to be rather dense in the foods. And we see that mainly in plants, fruits and vegetables. If you look over here to the stomach on the right, that's 400 calories of vegetables. It fills up the stomach, it has lots of different colors, lots of different substances in there, lots of different nutrients, lots of different good stuff. At the middle stomach, that's 400 calories full of meat. The stomach's not nearly as full and doesn't really present nearly as many nutrients as the full stomach of vegetables. Over on the left, you see 400 calories of fat or oil. Doesn't fill up the stomach very much, and certainly it really doesn't have that many nutrients at all in just plain old oil. So here, we might, have, oops, we might end up uh, eating more, more calories in order to get the nutrients that we need. And once again, generally speaking, you're probably getting more calories than we need. Looking at this table, uh, comparing 500 calories of plant-based foods versus 500 calories of animal-based foods, look at the red nutrients, generally negative nutrients, the meat's higher in fat, the meat's higher in cholesterol. Protein is a good nutrient, and, but we do see it's about equivalent, and typically uh, uh, plants are known to, to lack protein, but if you use plants wisely, you certainly can get just as much protein in your diet as meat, specifically those beans, the lima beans in there, are protein. The green nutrients, show, uh, the, the good nutrients here, shown in green, are without exception higher in the plant-based foods versus the animal-based foods. So in other words, in order to get the number of nutrients we see here in the animal-based diet, you'll have to eat more to get those nutrients. So plants tend to be more nutrient-dense, which is key to a healthy diet. It's the opposite of empty calories. Perhaps you've heard of empty calories, like beer it has a lot of calories, but doesn't have a lot of nutrients. So we're looking for the opposite of that, nutrient density. So people like to know, well, what are the top foods? What are the good foods to eat? Here's a brief list of the top 10. Apples, nuts, uh, most particular uh, almonds, berries, most notably blueberries, broccoli and its relatives, the cruciferous vegetables, beans, and not just green beans, but all sorts of beans, good source of protein, vegetarian protein, spinach, and basically green leafies in general, sweet potatoes, vegetable juices, fish, most notably salmon, and water. Well, some people might argue whether water is a food or not. It's just so important we have included in the list. Top 10. Furthermore, the diet should be colorful. Believe it or not, these colors really are nutrients. Most of those colors are phytonutrients, those pigments, and they are valuable to health. Typically, a meat-based diet isn't that colorful. Plants are not necessarily just green all the time. And lastly, regarding diet, the, the portions should be modest with periods of fasting. There's a modest portion. These days, the portion size has gone up. We see in fast food, the typical hamburger has enlarged its size in the last 20 days, and it really doesn't just apply to fast food. It applies to all sorts of foods. The portions have gotten bigger as time goes on. I think sometimes these days, people aren't quite sure what a portion looks like because it's been altered so much through time. Um, if eating lesser amounts of food doesn't sound so appealing, maybe you could just change the size of your plate. And what you see here uh, is the same amount of food shown on different plates. <laughs> well, I admit the first image seems uh, 
it seems like I'm going to be hungry in a little bit. Uh, same amount of food on a smaller plate looks a little more filling and satisfactory. So maybe just reduce the size of your plate, and you'll get full faster. And every once in a while, it's probably beneficial to skip a meal. It's a complete natural process. It happens all the time in nature. I know we're not quite used to it here in America. We're used to three or four meals plus snacks. But it really is healthy to skip a meal. It lets the gut clear out from beginning to end. It gives the digestive system a chance to rest and clean out, clean house. It's really key to good health. We're not talking about uh, starvation here, everybody. We're just talking about allowing the digestive system to relax. Here we see some research about caloric restriction. And real quick, the green mice were fully fed and they lived around 30 months. As we reduce the calories all the way up to 65% shown in red, we see that the mice live considerably longer, let's say almost up to 50 months. So basically the data is very clear, the less the mice ate, the longer they lived. Now this is not humans of course, but it probably applies to a certain degree to humans as well as other mammals. Other longevity practices, regular activity and exercise. There's various types of activities and exercise. Uh, aerobic activity is key. It gets the heart pumping. Uh, it's good for the lungs. It's good for the heart. It's good for the blood vessels. It's good for the brain. It's good for the whole body. It doesn't have to really be just running and, and aerobics. It could be working in the garden or playing with the children. Uh, it doesn't have to be exercise. It has to be some sort of activity. Strength exercises, lifting, pulling, and pushing. It's good for the muscles, it's good for the bones, it's good for the tendons. These things get weak and they atrophy if you don't use them. So you've got to use them through life. It keeps them healthy, it keeps them active, it keeps them the nutrients going to these body parts. And often overshadowed by those two is flexibility. Maintaining a full range of motion in your joints. As the human body ages, it tends to lock up. The tendons and the ligaments tend to, to seal to each other, and we get kind of a, a shuffle uh, as our range of movement becomes more limited. So flexibility, while you don't necessarily have to contort yourself into pretzel-like shapes, it's good to maintain a full range of motion throughout your life. Drinking water, how simple. Who would have thought drinking water is key to good health and longevity? The water needs to be clean, the water needs to be pure, and preferably not from a plastic water bottle. Uh, perhaps a clean and pure uh, source of water um, that you can use a reusable water bottle. Furthermore, a lot of water. A half a gallon is probably four glasses that were kind of recommended in this society, but probably double that would be great. It's hard to drink too much water. Avoid dehydrating and dehydrating substances like caffeine and alcohol. They take the water out of your body, which is the opposite way that we're trying to go here. We need the, the body needs water. Lastly, a low stress lifestyle. Not exactly anatomical or biological, but still key. Rest, take time to rest, relax, laugh, and have enjoyment. Free time with undirected behavior. Leave some scheduled time blank. Let spontaneity take over. Do whatever happens at the moment. Our children are great at this. Children are great at undirected behavior. They don't have a plan, they just play. And look how happy they are. Time with family and friends and other loved ones. It, it makes a, form a connection, a bond with other people. Uh, it makes life feel more meaningful, uh, more purposeful. Uh, spending time with family, friends, and other people. So, looking at the wisdom of the ancient cultures and coupling it with the modern scientific research, we've come up with what people have been seeking for thousands of years, the secrets of longevity. And I've got them right here. In the, my backpack of long life. Let's see. <laughs> what do we have in here? What do we have in here? A small bowl. Doesn't have to be too big, just a small. Fill it with some green leafies. Uh, fill it with some green leafies. What else do I have in here? Oh my gosh, there's a lot of stuff in this bag of long life. Where's the other <laughs> Pop an apple in there. Diet. Diet is key. Activity? Exercise? Or just activity? Keep busy. The body's meant to be used. Use it. Sedentary lifestyles kill. What else? What else? Water. 
water in a reusable water bottle. BPA free reusable water bottle. Who would have thought? So simple, so effective. What else? What? Else? Spend time with family and friends. Oh my god. <laughs> and also, everybody, don't forget to smile. <laughs> and they will all have a long, happy, and healthy life.